The aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt is currently operating in the Pacific Ocean and from the looks of it the Big Stick, is one of the most well-protected warships in history. USS Roosevelt and its crew of 5,000 is currently being escorted by no less than six guided missile cruisers and destroyers, each packing nearly a hundred missiles. The images reinforce the notion that the US Navy is, ton for ton, the largest and most capable Navy sailing today. The video shows USS Roosevelt steaming in formation with a particularly strong group, of escorts consisting of one guided missile cruiser and five guided missile destroyers. According to the U.S. Naval Institute News Fleet and Marine Tracker, the Roosevelt CSG is currently somewhere in the West Pacific. A U.S. Carrier Strike Group CSG, typically consists of an aircraft carrier, one guided missile cruiser, and two or three guided missile destroyers. The cruiser is the main escort coordinating the defense of the aircraft carrier, particularly against aerial threats. Lurking somewhere nearby is a nuclear-powered attack submarine protecting the rest of the strike group from subsurface threats. The Theodore Roosevelt Carrier Strike Group is unusual because of the large number of escorts. The cruiser is USS Bunker Hill, the oldest of the Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruisers. Bunker Hill is equipped with the Aegis combat system, including the Spy-1 air defense radar and is equipped with 122 vertical launch systems. Each VLS is an armored silo capable of carrying SM-2, SM-6, and SMAR defense missiles, Tomahawk land attack cruise missiles, and anti-submarine rocket torpedoes. The five destroyers are all Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyers, USS Pinckney, USS Russell, USS Paul Hamilton, USS Kidd, and USS Raphael Peralta. USS Russell and USS Hamilton are the oldest ships and were built at a time when the Burke-class ships did not have hangars to embark helicopters. USS Rafael Peralta is one of the newest ships in the fleet. Each of the five destroyers is equipped with 90 to 96 VLS silos, for a total of 468 silos spread out among the destroyers. In addition to the escorts, USS Theodore Roosevelt's carrier air wing brings 44 F-18 EF strike fighters, approximately 5 VA-18 Grams Growler electronic attack jets, 4 E-2C or E-2D Hawkeye airborne early warning planes, and 2 C-2A Greyhound transports. The air wing also includes 19 MH-60 helicopters based both on the Roosevelt and her escorts. In other words, the Theodore Roosevelt Carrier Strike Group consists of 49 fighters or fighter-like jets and 590 missile silos, each carrying one or more missiles. This is a tremendous amount of firepower equaling that of a small country. It makes Theodore Roosevelt one of the best protected ships in the world, but it also makes the big stick the biggest target. On March 5, 2020, Theodore Roosevelt, along with the cruiser USS Bunker Hill, arrived at Da Nang, Vietnam. For a five-day port visit commemorating the 25th anniversary of United States-Vietnam relations. Main article, COVID-19 pandemic on USS Theodore Roosevelt. On March 24, 2020, during the COVID-19 pandemic, three sailors aboard the deployed vessel tested positive for COVID-19. A coronavirus disease identified as the cause of an outbreak of respiratory illness. Within a few days, that number climbed to dozens. Theodore Roosevelt was reported to be the first ship in the U.S. Navy to have a COVID-19 outbreak while at sea, Theodore Roosevelt docked at Guam on March 27, 2020. By 31st of March, the number of infected sailors was over 100, and the captain, Brett Crozier, pleaded for help from the Navy, sending an email to 10 Pacific Fleet admirals and captains, including his superior, the commander of Carrier Strike Group 9, and the commander of the Pacific Fleet, requesting that his ship be evacuated. The U.S. Navy ordered the aircraft carrier evacuated with a skeleton crew of 400 to remain aboard the vessel to maintain the nuclear reactor, the firefighting equipment, and the ship's galley. On 2nd of April, Acting Navy Secretary Thomas Modley relieved Crozier of his command for sending the request for assistance over non-secure email to what he characterized as broad array of people, rather than up the chain of command adding that Crozier, allowed the complexity of the challenge of the COVID breakout on the ship to overwhelm his ability to act professionally. 
Crozier was to remain in the Navy and retain his rank. Several members of the House Armed Services Committee criticized the decision, stating that the dismissal of Captain Crozier at this critical moment, as the sailors aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt are confronted with the COVID-19 pandemic, is a reckless political move that reeks of undue command influence. Captain Carlos A. Sardiello assumed temporary command of Theodore Roosevelt, his second stint serving as the ship's captain. Modley traveled to Guam and gave a ship-wide speech, which the New York Times described as a tirade, during which he was heckled by some of the sailors. After demands from Congress that he be fired, Modley resigned on April 7. As of 20 of April, 4,069 sailors had been moved off the ship, 94% of the crew had been tested for the virus, yielding 678 positive and 3,904 negative results. As of 17 of April, seven crew members were in the hospital including one in intensive care. About 60% of the people who tested positive did not have symptoms. As of 16 of April, most of the ship had been cleaned. Sailors kept testing positive for the virus even after 14 days of isolation, some who tested positive had previously tested negative. The Navy temporarily suspended post-quarantine testing and extended the sailors' isolation, delaying plans to begin moves of the crew back to the carrier. Some sailors volunteered for antibody testing. Initial testing was completed by April 27, 2020, at which point, 969 crew members had tested positive, and 14 of those 969 had recovered. By 29th of April, sailors that were previously quarantined in Guam began moving back to the ship. Theodore Roosevelt returned to sea on 21st of May for the first time after being sidelined for two months due to COVID-19.